Today's topic is the Huawei Photonic Chip. Why is it possible for the American chip to restrict the chip? I suppose this is because we do not manufacture our own photonic chips. Huawei, a Chinese electronics manufacturer, is concentrating more on photonic chips to overcome this issue. So let us learn more about it. What really is China lacking? In reality, it is entrepreneurial research and development. It would be unrealistic to expect the West to always provide us with lithographic equipment technologies. Thus, even as China works hard to develop lithography equipment for 5 nanometer devices, the West is already ahead of China. Others' outstanding innovations can only serve as a guide, and China can always chase them down. China should choose a different path, one less trodden, and finally let them follow China. I am convinced that Chinese chips like 5G technologies will lead the world in the future. As China is growing in global influence, there is still a deficit in the electronic sector when compared to other developed countries. The chip field is the most noticeable. The internet heralded the arrival of the 21st century. Our lives are intricately tied to electronic gadgets and the chip, as the electronic device's brain, is without a doubt the most critical point. Hello and welcome to Economic News. Today, we will be discussing the upcoming power of China when it comes to microchip production. Before we start, please like the video and subscribe with all notifications turned on. Now, let us begin. How did the chip come to be? A photolithography machine is used to create the chip as a solution. The technological content of the lithography equipment used to produce the production chip is higher than that used to produce subchips. It is not an exaggeration to say that the lithography machine exceeds atomic bomb manufacture. Although China has a lithography machine, it is not as good as the greatest in the world. The Netherlands ASML is currently the most well-known, and current production of 5 nanometers process lithography machines can only be built in the Netherlands. The lithography machine incorporates the greatest technology from several Western countries. The US has been envious of Huawei's cutting-edge achievements in recent years and has repeatedly imposed sanctions on Huawei's semiconductor R&D plan. This is known as a ban. To avoid falling behind, China may abandon lithography machine research and development in favor of an alternative approach into the area of photonic chips. Modern mobile phones employ electronic chips, but photonic chips use silicon and silicon-based materials as optical media. By integrating in a specified region, photons replace conventional electrons as a transmission route. Instead of earlier electrical communication, opt for photon transfer. If it is successful, Huawei's chips will no longer be manufactured, putting an end to the country's reliance on imports. Don't be put off by the fact that photonic chips aren't readily accessible right now. Photonic chips may be one day be at the forefront of the world's chips. As the size of mobile phone chips shrinks, so will the demand for lithography devices. A lithography equipment with a 1 nanometer process may be required in a few years. Is this acceptable? Nobody can give a precise answer. Additionally, the first orbital angular momentum waveguide photonic chip has been constructed and patented in China according to the media reports. Likewise, the photonic chip will have 10 times the processing performance of today's electronic chip while requiring only 1% of the power. Although it is not now widely used, it is expected to become so in the future. Additionally, the photonic chip will have 10 times the processing performance of today's electronic chip while requiring only 1% of the power. The number of transistors that a chip can carry impacts its performance. The higher the number, the higher the processing power and the lower the energy consumption. As a result, reducing transistors has long been a chip technological goal. 3 nanometers is the world's most advanced chip technology. 3 nanometers and 5 nanometer chips, on the other hand, are rarely used in our daily lives and production. Although 28 nanometers and 55 nanometers technologies are, the chip's application is growing more common, which is related to technological development. In this day and age, the production expenses of 3 nanometer and 5 nanometers are too expensive, and there is no greater usage. But as time goes on, 
3 nanometers and 5 nanometers high-end technologies will become more common, while 28 nanometers and 55 nanometers will become reduced until they are obsolete. As a result, the competition for cutting-edge chip technology is vital. This is a future market rivalry, not a current market rivalry. China, on the other hand, has fallen far behind in the chip race. Assuming the 3 nanometer chips are now available, my country's self-produced chips can only reach 14 nanometers at most, with 7 nanometers remaining between 3 nanometers and 5 nanometer threshold. When China is oppressed by the US, it takes a lot of effort and energy to break through one generation. And when China achieves technological advances, the most advanced chip technology may be 1 nanometer. China is at a considerable disadvantage in the battle for traditional chips, making it difficult to take the lead. Chinese scientists, on the other hand, took a different path and created a new type of semiconductor, the photon chip. If the photon chip research is successful, my country will almost certainly use the photon chip to achieve diversion and overtaking. Changing the current international chip pattern and dominating the chips initiative, in charge of creating next-generation semiconductors is Ren Zhengfei, who had predicted it will become the norm in the future. A new development in the field of light quantum chips, Huawei has finished ahead of time. China's research on optical quantum devices has yielded additional encouraging results. This time, Guo Gongchou and his colleagues from China's University of Science and Technology accomplished the breakthrough. Academician Guo Gongchou and his colleagues published an essay on light quantum devices in physics review letters on June 11. In this work, Guo Gongchou's team developed a revolutionary method for producing light quantum chips, hastening the development of light quantum computers. Light quantum processors are becoming more feasible as optical quantum devices improve. Ren Zhengfei has a distinct vision and, with the assistance of the University of Science and Technology of China, has made important advances in semiconductor technology. Not only did the Chinese Academy of Sciences and other significant domestic institutions invest early in optical quantum computers, but so did the well-known commercial firm Huawei. Nonetheless, a significant portion of Huawei's choice to invest in optical quantum computers was forced. The first victim of U.S. capital's persecution of China's semiconductor sector is Huawei. Before receiving U.S. finance, Huawei's High Silicon was already a well-known semiconductor company, and its chip design level has reached the world's first-class level. Huawei's high-end smartphones are not reliant on Qualcomm because of high silicon processors, but MediaTek chips have decreased dependency on foreign chips to some extent. Laomei, on the other hand, effectively cut off Huawei's chip supply. The majority of the world's chip production capacity is controlled by TSMC, a well-known chip producer. TSMC manufactures semiconductors for semiconductor behemoths such as Qualcomm, Apple, and Google, and Huawei is no exception. Due to the American ban, TSMC no longer supplies processors to Huawei and high silicon's capabilities have transformed into a sky fortress. The lack of processors by Huawei is not owing to a lack of effort in manufacturing its own CPUs. Domestic technology, on the other hand, is out of date, making it difficult to rescue Huawei. At the time, Huawei chose to invest in optical quantum computers, hoping that they would usher in a new era for the company. Ren Zhengfei, in my opinion, has a distinct point of view. The rate at which light quantum devices are being produced far outpaces people's expectations. Perhaps in the near future, my country will be able to rely on light quantum chips to relieve neck pain, and Huawei will be resurrected. Thank you for watching this video. Do let us know down in the comment section below if you are either excited or frightened by the news we have showcased. Also, do check out our other videos on the channel. Goodbye now and see you soon.